Hey guys, in this video I'll go over the sniper pod for the Viper. Make sure the power is on by flipping up the right hard point switch. Once you turn it on, the targeting pod page will say off. A little bit later, it'll say not timed out. Once you're in the not timed out page, you'll see the percentage to completion here. In total, it takes around 12 minutes to warm up. Once it's warmed up, you'll see the standby page. If you click the standby button, you can go to air to ground or air to air mode. First, let's do air to ground mode. By default, the targeting pod will be looking at your current selected waypoint. If you press DMS down, you can make it your sensor of interest, and then you can slew around the targeting pod. If you click CZ for cursor zero, it'll go back to your steer point. Right now it's in TV mode, but you can change it to white hot or black hot. You can also press TMS left to change between the polarities. If you hold TMS aft, it will remove the crosshair. You can use these rockers to adjust the brightness and the contrast. If you are in one of the infrared modes like white hot or black hot, then you can use this button to change from the wide field of view or the narrow field of view. You can also use this button up here. However, if you click this button, it gives you extra field of view options. Right now we're in wide extended range, narrow, and narrow extended range. I'll go over how extended range mode works a little bit later. Now let's go to TV field of view. In TV, if you click the pinky switch, it's a little bit different. Right now we are in the wide mode for TV, which is actually the FLIR. If you click it, it goes to picture in picture mode, which is where it has the actual TV view in the middle and it has a FLIR view on the outside. So that way you get the clearness of the TV camera and also the expanded situational awareness of the FLIR camera. If you click it again, it has just the TV camera. And if you click it again, it goes back to the TV wide field of view, which is really just the FLIR. You can do the same thing by clicking this button here. The only difference is that this button also gives you the TV expanded view. And once again, I'll talk about the extended range view later. You can also use the manual range knob to zoom in and out. Let's go over some of the controls. If you press override, it forces it into standby mode and you can press it again to go back to normal mode. This chooses the tracking mode. If you have it to W, it'll only track white points. On B, it'll only track black points, and on N, it'll track both. I recommend just leaving it on N. Like I mentioned, if you press this, it'll take it back to your waypoint. You can also press TMS aft to take it back to your waypoint. Laser spot track and this pointer button are related to the laser, which I'll go over later. And MT is for multi-track, which I'll go over later. This is the meter stick. This shows the length in meters that the right crosshair represents. You can also see the slant range right here. The slant range is the range from your plane to where the pod is looking on the ground. As you can see, if I move my pod closer to me, the slant range goes down. The slant range has an E in front of it, but it can also show a T or an L. E is for low confidence, T is for high confidence, and L is for laser. I'll show you how to use the laser to get slant range later. Let's go to the control page. This button turns on a grayscale. This button hides the coordinates and other information. This button is for the automatic gain. As you can see, I can set it to manual gain where I can adjust the level here and the gain here. You can press it again for auto gain. This disables TV mode. If I press it off, then I can only use the FLIR modes. If I click it again, then it allows me to use TV mode. This is for the focus control. If you have focus enabled, you can move your slew controller up and down to adjust the focus. You can also do auto focus if you are in any track modes, which I'll talk about later, but for now I'm just going to go into area track. If you're in any track modes and you press the slew controller left or right, it will enter auto focus. Now keep in mind, with the focus, whenever I adjust it, it seems like it's always the clearest on 50. Also, every time I use autofocus, it always just sets it back to 50. So I'm assuming that with the focus, you don't really need to mess with it. You can just leave it to the default and that should be it. This button that says V inst will replace the coordinates here with degrees to show where the flare is pointing. Keep in mind, this only works if you're on the ground and it's meant for the ground crew. You don't really need to mess with it in DCS. There's also the FLIR calibrate button. The manual said that the FLIR picture quality can decrease over time. In the manual, it said every once in a while, you can click this to do a FLIR calibration and it will correct the FLIR for you. It takes 30 seconds and you can abort it if you want. However, it said if you abort it, it can make your FLIR worse. So if you click it, you should just finish the calibration. Then there is the auto bore button. This also works on the ground. This will bore sight the TV camera, the FLIR camera, the laser and the laser spot tracker to make sure they all look in the same place. The manual also said that this is 
meant for the ground crew, and they're all already correct in DCS, so you don't need to use this button. That was the control page. Now let's go into the tracking modes. The tracking mode will be shown on the bottom. As you can see, I'm not in any tracking modes right now. If you press TMS right, you enter area track. TMS forward will enter point track, which is good for moving targets. Also keep in mind, if you hold TMS forward, it'll be in area track, and then if you want, you can slew it over and release it to enter point track. If you hold TMS right, it will enter inertial track. What inertial track is used for is, let's say you have a point track on a moving car. If the car is about to be obstructed behind a building, you can hold TMS right to go into inertial track, and the targeting pod will keep moving at the same direction and speed as it was. And then once you see the car again, you can slew the targeting pod onto it and recommand a point track. Now, one thing I've noticed is that if you're doing an inertial track, once you see the car again, Again. If your cursor happens to be right on top of the car and you press a point track, it'll move the targeting pod and it'll try to get a point track back on the place where you initially put the targeting pod into inertial track. So if you use an inertial track after the car has passed the building, once you see the car again, make sure you move the targeting pod around a little bit and then put it back on the car and command a point track. If you are in any of the tracking modes and you press TMS aft, it will exit the tracking mode and then you can press TMS aft again to go back to your waypoint. Now let's go over the extended range mode, which I talked about earlier. Extended range mode applies extra processing to make the picture more clear. In order to enter extended range mode, first you need to have a track, so I'm just going to use area track, and then you need to double click the pinky button. You'll see the XR blinking, and once it's done, you can see the image will become more clear. If you're using one of the FLIR modes, you can use extended range mode in the wide field of view or in the narrow field of view. The TV camera has only one field of view, and it works the same. If you have a track and you double click the pinky button, you can go into extended range mode. The other way you can enter extended range mode is by clicking the button up here. Also, when you are in extended range processing, you cannot use the manual range knob. Now I'll go over multi-target track. If you press the MT button, it goes into multi-target track. Multi-target track changes how the controls work. If you press TMS up on a target, it will put a circle around it. If you press TMS up on any other targets, it'll put a circle around them too, and it'll change the other ones to a rectangle. The circle target is your current selected one. All the other targets will have rectangles. If you use TMS right, you can change which target has a circle over it. If you want to automatically move the camera to the circle targets, you can hold TMS TMS up. Keep in mind, if you are in any track mode and you hold TMS up, it'll not work. For example, I'm in area track right now, so if I exit area track and then hold TMS up, I can move to this target. This makes it really easy to swap between targets because I can just move my circle and do TMS up. If you want to remove a target, you can hover over it and do TMS aft. If you are over a tracked target, you can press TMS up to enter a point track. Whenever you're using multi-track, because TMS right swaps through the targets, you need to hold hold TMS right to enter area track. Also, in multi-target track mode, you cannot enter inertial track. If you press the MT button again, it will delete all your tracks. Now let's go over the laser. You can set the laser up by pressing list and going to miscellaneous and laser. The TGP code is the laser code that your targeting pod will use for guiding bombs. LST code is for the laser spot tracker. If you want to track a targeting pod on another Viper, you need to figure out what their TGP code is and type it into your LST code. You can also set the laser mode. If you hover over this and press any button on the keypad, it switches the laser between combat mode and training mode. Combat mode allows you to use the laser to guide bombs and also also to get range. Training mode only allows the laser to get range. Also, if the targeting pod is in air-to-air -air mode, you can only use the training laser. This is the time for the auto lace. This is the time before bomb impact that your laser will automatically turn on. For example, right now it's set to 8, which means that 8 seconds before bomb impact, the laser will automatically turn on. If you set it to 0, it'll disable the auto laser. Once your laser is set up, you can press this switch to turn it on, and you're going to need the first detent of the gun trigger. If you hold down the first detent of the gun trigger, the L will start blinking, which means it is lazing. The laser is useful if you want to get an accurate slant range. It's recommended that you use the laser while creating mark points. You can see the slant range here. Remember, E is low confidence, T is high confidence, and L is laser. The laser has a maximum slant range of 8 miles. As you can see, the slant range here is 9.5 miles, so even when firing the laser, it doesn't use the laser to calculate slant range. However, if I move the targeting pod so that the slant range is within 8 miles. Then when I fire the laser, it says L. You can also press
press the PTR button, which puts the laser into pointer mode, which means that instead of firing a laser, it will fire an IR pointer. The IR pointer can be seen at nighttime if you're wearing night vision goggles, and it is used for visually marking targets. Another way to enter the into the pointer mode is by double clicking TMS right. This is what the pointer looks like. There's also the laser spot search, which allows you to track other people's lasers. Like I mentioned earlier, if you press list and go to miscellaneous and laser, you can type in the laser spot search code, and then you point the targeting pod in the general area of where it is supposed to be and press the LST button. You can also use the uncage button. Last thing to note about the laser is that if you are in CCIP bombing mode, you can press the trigger to the second detent to activate the laser for 30 seconds. That was the targeting pod in air to ground mode. Now let's go into air to air mode. Mode. When the targeting pod is in air-to-air -air mode, it will follow your radar cursor. As my radar cursor moves left and right, you can see the targeting pod moves with it. Also, the elevation control on the radar will adjust the elevation on the pod. If you lock or bug a target, then the targeting pod will automatically track it. As you can see right now, it is tracking that jet. You can press TMS up to get a point track on it and TMS aft to drop the track. You can manually slew your pod around wherever you want and get a point track on something. However, if you press TMS aft, it'll point your pod back to the radar track. Also, if you want, your radar and targeting pod can be tracking two different things at the same time. What your radar is tracking will show up as a solid box, and what the targeting pod is tracking will show up as a dotted box. And like I mentioned, you can always press TMS aft to point the targeting pod back towards what the radar is tracking. The last air-to-air -air function for the targeting pod is the multi-track mode. If you press MT, it'll automatically get a track on everything it sees. If you hold TMS up, it'll point the pod toward your selected track, and you can press TMS up to try to get a point track. And just like with normal multi-target track, you can press TMS right to swap through your targets. That was the sniper pod for the Viper. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.